Hi, and welcome back to Glassboxed, writing Java automated scripts. Today, we are going to set up our development environment. So what that means is we're going to download uh, and install Java, we're going to install um, Eclipse, uh, our IDE, and we're going to install WebDriver. Uh, and we're going to install them in that order, and I'll explain why as we go along. So, the first thing we should do is install Java. Uh, so if you don't already have it installed, what we need to do is download and install uh, the runtime environment for Java. So do a quick search uh, for download Java JRE. Uh, and we need to download the JRE uh, from the Oracle site. So if you click on that link, all the links will be in the description below uh, for quick access. And what you need to do is um, just accept the agreement here uh, and download the version of Java that applies to your OS system. So if it's uh, a Windows, uh, it'd be one of these, and then it's um, isolated to whichever version of window, uh, whichever bit version of Windows you're running. So 32 would be one of these, 3 or uh, 64 would be one of these, and, and so on. Uh, so once you've actually uh, installed Java, uh, a quick way of uh, confirming if Java is actually running on your machine correctly, or uh, is to um, just uh, just check the version of Java you're running via uh, CMD. So how you do this is uh, just punch in um, CMD into your Windows search bar, run it. Uh, you get a, a command line interface like this, and just uh, punch in uh, Java space dash version, uh, and that should give you the version of Java that you're currently running. Uh, if you get something, if you get an error message uh, along the lines of uh, unable to find Java EXE or Java EXE does not exist or, or something to that means uh, that you use most commonly is down to one of two things. Uh, the first is you don't actually have genuinely Java installed on your machine, uh, which if you follow this you probably do. And the other version is um, your run, uh, your environment variables have been haven't been set up for Java correctly. Uh, to do that, it's pr pr pretty straightforward. What you need to do is uh, go to computer, uh, right click properties, uh, then click on advanced system settings, uh, then click on environment variables, and then you need to just set up your Java home and Java paths uh, here. So once you've done that, uh, just really quickly go back and do another Java version on your CMD window just to check everything's uh, set up. Uh, so now that you have Java setting uh, done, we now need to install Eclipse. Similarly, on Google, just uh, do a quick search for download Eclipse. Uh, I usually go to the official Google site, uh, Eclipse site rather. Uh, and then from here, you download whichever version of Eclipse you want. Um, so really quickly, there's different versions of Eclipse. Uh, the, the kind of baseline Eclipse uh, tools that Eclipse provides are the same uh, amongst all of these. Uh, but each one has uh, extra kind of, I don't know, uh, what's the best way to put it really, um, dressing on top, which is more catered for a more kind of specialized um, uh, application development. Uh, so for instance, um, Java uh, IDE for Java EE developers is more kind of web -or -orientate, uh, orientated, whereas for Java developers is more kind of um, just kind of casual uh, Java developing. Uh, C is obviously Eclipse, but uh, for C developers. Uh, so the version I'm using is a uh, Java IDE for Java developers. Um, I really don't need uh, heavy duty stuff. Um, there's no need for me to have this extra stuff or, or, or any of this. Uh, this kind of serves my purpose quite well. Uh, so once you've actually downloaded this, uh, naturally pick whichever version you need. Uh, then what will happen is you'll actually end up with um, a folder uh, for Eclipse. And inside that folder, uh, you won't find an EXE file, you'll actually find the whole version of Eclipse. Um, hence why the kind of large upload size. So once you've actually got Eclipse, if you double click on the uh, application icon, what should ha happen is Eclipse should actually run. Now, going back to why we install Java first, when you actually try, when you install Eclipse uh, for the first time, if you try and run it and your machine does not have a version of Java running, uh, Eclipse will throw an error saying, sorry, unable to find Eclipse, uh, sorry, unable to find Java. And uh, it won't start up. Uh, so that's why we install Java first. Uh, Java runtime environment is needed in order to run Eclipse. Uh, so the kind of uh, happy scenario is Java is installed and you run Eclipse and then you get this pop-up, which is basically saying where is your workspace. Uh, 
think of this as your kind of default directory in which all your projects are saved when running Eclipse. You can obviously change this if you like. Um, I am not too fast. I'm happy with where it is. Uh, so just press OK. Oh, apparently that doesn't exist. Okay, so we will use our desktop. Uh, press OK. Uh, by the way, I, I advise not to use uh, on desktop uh, because it creates various kind of uh, files and folders such as this that you would want to probably keep uh, cleanly tucked away somewhere else. Uh, but this is supposed to be a quick tutorial, uh, not too lengthy. Right, and this is what Eclipse looks like. Um, I'll kind of go through the kind of uh, Eclipse uh, interface uh, probably in a future video. Uh, the focus of this video is to set up our environment. Uh, so the last thing you need is a uh, web driver or more specifically our Selenium jars. Uh, so to, to actually get these jars, um, again just do a quick search on Google for download Selenium. Um, I go for the official site where I can get all the Selenium uh, goodness from. And you need two different jars. What you need is the, uh, the Selenium server jar which you can get by uh, downloading from this section, so ooh, let me just from this section here, uh, just download that. That's going to give you a Selenium server, which effectively runs um, the server in the background, which allows you to uh, automate web pages. Uh, and the second job you're going to need is uh, the client, uh, and you need to pick the language that you're running on. So, this will be running on Java, uh, quite naturally, I suppose. Uh, this is the one you need to download. Uh, so once you've downloaded these two, uh, and well, note that um, Selenium comes in uh, many, many flavors, uh, not just Java. Once you've downloaded those, uh, you'll have uh, your kind of jars here. So ignore this. Um, I let me get rid of that. In fact, uh, so you'll have your Selenium server, which is the first thing we downloaded, and you'll have your uh, language-specific uh, jar as well. Um, jars are basically, uh, you can think of them as libraries, um, where a library has books and then book has chapters and each chapter has paragraphs. A jar is kind of like an abstract version of a library, it's just many methods within kind of, uh, well many classes, each class has their methods. Uh, again we can go into details as we go along. So to actually um, use uh, one of these jars, it's quite straightforward really. What we need to do is, uh, basically, um, when we create a new project, uh, so let's just call it um, a dummy test project, just for now. Uh, we're happy with um, it using Java 7. Yeah, this is picked up uh, by our Java installation. Press next. Uh, we get this screen where we can kind of set various uh, more kind of um, settings to this project. If you click on the Libraries tab, you can now add in those external jars here and by adding in those jars here, so if you click finish, so these external jars can now be used as part of our project uh, and that's how we add in uh, Selenium to our projects. Um, there are various various other ways, um, there's various other ways we can do it using um, build technologies like um, uh, well for Java we can use stuff like Gradle or, or Maven, uh, Antiven, uh, but this is the kind of really kind of n quick and uh, I don't know nitty gritty way uh, of, of just getting things set up quickly um, right so we now actually have an environment fully ready to uh, automate in um, for my next video we'll actually do some automation uh, so we'll probably do a really basic automation just some kind of hello world if you like well thanks a lot for listening any questions uh, please leave comments below uh, please rate and subscribe thanks a lot bye